Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another life drawing video. Um, today we're going to be covering the arm. So if you watched any of my previous videos, we have gone over head, torso, um, the hand, and so now we're going to connect those two points of torso to hand, and we have the arm. A um, couple of things jumping into the arm. We do have what I would count as three things to consider, right? So we have um, the shoulder, we have the upper portion of the arm, and then we have our forearm, right? So this is this kind of makes it a little complicated because there is like a lot of joints going on here. There's a lot of movement that can happen in the arm where our shoulders can take our arms forward and back, up and down. Um, our forearms can rotate completely over, right? Um, so we're gonna try to simplify this a little bit. There's definitely a lot more arm videos that can be made, but for today's purposes, we're just gonna focus on thinking about the arm from the front and the back view. So looking at the arms, and don't feel like you have to draw this yet, this is just so I can kind of explain things and I'm gonna show you how um, I did draw these, right? I, Cause there is proportions to this, but uh, we wanna look at what's going on inside first. So like I said, um, the arm can get complicated cause we have a lot of uh, movement and range going on. One thing I want you guys to notice is that the upper portion of the arm, even though this is the portion that people look at the most, especially like if someone like has muscle definition or something, we always think about, oh, this person has big biceps or whatever it is. Um, so these part of the arms get a lot of attention, but it's actually much shorter than the forearm, okay? There's much more length going on here than there is here. Um, <clears throat> and what you can actually look at is because the bone of the upper arm is started up here in the shoulder, right? So, which I'll show you in a second. So the bone is actually going through here, and then you have the bone going through the forearm there. But let's look at that. So there are three bones um, that we need to know in the arm, right? So, and then I also threw in this so we can see it a little clearer. So we have one big bone up here at the top, okay? And then we have um, two down here, okay? And the, the two bones down in the forearm are what give our, our arm that ability to rotate under and over, okay? The technical term for that is called supinating. Um, so it's just, if you can imagine, these bones actually at a certain point cross over each other, like they create, so like right now they're running alongside each other, and then when they cross, they, they actually cross over and create like an X shape, okay? So these bones do have names, okay? And I think it's pretty simple, it's only three, so I thought I'd throw it in here. So you have your humerus, okay? This is, if anyone's ever heard that super hilarious joke where someone hits their elbow and they say, I hit my funny bone. This is the reason it's called the funny bone. Um, it's, it's because it's the humerus, right? It's, it's humor. Um, other than that, you have the ulna and the radius. And the way I like to remember that is that the ulna is usually, it's it's the bigger one in the forearm. The radius is the smaller one, okay? Uh, the radius is the one that gives you that ability to turn it over, right? Um, where the ulna is more of a fixed bone. Um, okay, so another thing that we need to think about that's going on in the arms though, like I mentioned when people fixate on like the upper arm more so than they think about the lower arm is um, we have to think about the muscles that are going on in there too. So I simplified this a bit, it's still very complicated, and the reason it is complicated is because there's so much going on in the forearms. Um, these are called like extensors, and they all have individual names, so we won't go over that. But essentially, these are all muscles that exist and connect to the biceps and the triceps, and they control your finger joints and stuff, and that's why there's so much going on in here, because we have five fingers, right? Or four fingers and a thumb, and I can move my hand back and forth, I can flex my hand, I can stretch my hand, um, all these things are being controlled throughout here, okay? All of these little, um, these like uh, tendons down here are being pulled up by these muscles, okay? So that's why there's so much going on there. Um, but trying to look past how confusing that looks, what we have, we'll think of the bottom portion as just the forearm, um, just be aware that there's a lot of muscles going on down there, uh, and that's what gives us this bump, right? 
how we have that bump shape. Okay. Other than that, we have our bicep, right? Probably one of the most popular muscle groups, I would say, of the body. Um, and then we have the tricep, which you can see more over here. But I do want to point out over here, too, that you can see the tricep behind the bicep. And this is because um, the tricep is actually a much bigger muscle than the bicep. And so therefore, even when you're looking at someone from the front, even someone who has a ton of muscle definition, the thing that's making their arm look so big is actually the muscle group behind it. It's the tricep that's filling up the arm. Okay, so it's um, you do want to be thinking about that when you're drawing someone in a picture. And then let's say you do want to make someone who looks bigger. Don't just give them like gigantic biceps and then the bottom of their arm is super tiny, right? Um, because it, it, at, at the end of the day, it's not anatomically proportional because this should be the bigger muscle group. Um, okay, so other than that, um, we also do have to look up at the shoulder as well, right? And this, this muscle group I just left called the shoulder, but it is called the deltoid. And the deltoid's kind of like in a, it's like a, almost like a seashell shape, okay? Right? It's like a fan shape. Um, and this is this this shape is what gives us like that complete circular motion that we can create with our shoulders, right? Where I can roll my arm around in a circle, I can put my arm back, I can put it forward. Um, this is what gives us that free range of motion going on in our arm, which is kind of like what makes the arm a little more complex to talk about than just a couple positions. And I get that, but we're just going to stick to these two positions that um, I have today, so that way we can break down the proportions on these, and then we can always go further in on it later, right? So another thing, when I talked about the torso, I talked about simplifying the shape, right? Remember if you t remember the shape of the rib cage and the pelvis, I turned it into a, the pelvis was like a box and the rib cage was like an egg shape or maybe just kind of like a rounded kind of box shape. So for the arm, you kind of have two options that you can look at when we're looking at simple shapes. You have this, the, the cylinder, right? Where you're kind of thinking of it like this. Um, you generally want there to always be some sort of taper where it's going in. The taper is going to be much more extreme on the forearm. Okay. And then the other option here, let me get rid of my cylinder, is to just think of it as like um, a rectangle that's slightly tapering in and then a, another rectangle that's a little longer, right? It's longer and it has a much more exaggerated taper because again if you remember the muscle groups that i showed you i can go back to it here the muscles all generate at the top and then they turn into little tiny tendons that go into the hand so the the muscle belly so to speak is at the top of the, the forearm and um, where they're pulling from gets thin because it goes into the hand and we don't have bulky hands right our hands are like usually very we don't have any kind of bulk going on in there or any thickness. It's just tendons. Um, so we don't um, we don't have a lot of place for muscles in there, which is why there's so much. There's it's why that bump cr is created on the forearm because it's it's where all of that control is coming from. Cool. So <laughs> these are the kind of shapes that you want to think about. Generally speaking, um, what you can think of is that the shape of the, if you're just gonna try to do arms without the body, I'm gonna draw it with the body to show you guys how it fits into like that head shape proportion. But you can think about like the width generally, oh, let me get on the correct layer here. The width generally of the shoulder to about the elbow is gonna exist up to be about to like, it's gonna be from like the top of the forearm to maybe like the cent, like to the midline of the hand. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit lower than the wrist for sure. Um, so when you're drawing something, if you drew in the upper arm, you can just know that the length here is probably gonna take you to the length here somewhere. Um, so then you can just know a little bit higher up is your is your wrist. And you guys probably noticed that my hands are drawn very simply because we're not focusing on the hands today. Um, this will help us kind of stay focused on the arms and not get stuck on the complexity of the hand, right? Because I want to focus on 
the proportions in the anatomy that we're looking at, which is um, our arms from the front and back view today. Okay, so a couple things. Let me show you how we're going to break this down, and then I'll break it down with you guys. So I have my person, okay? And I did a front and back, and I left one arm out because we're going to draw that together, right? But why did I draw a full person in here? Um, because we're going to be talking about how head size is what we're using to create the proportions of the arm, right? It's what we use to create the body. If you guys remember, um, we had, if it's one head, if we brought one head down, it's about to the mid chest or like the nipple length, and then another head down goes to the navel or the belly button, and then so on and so forth, right? So we're using those proportions that I already kind of gridded out here. So to see where our arm placement is. So kind of cool, we do get a little bit of um, a little bit of help here from our head proportions, which I, I, uh, I like. So it's like we have one head, here's the second head down, and the second head gives us right here the bottom of the shoulder, which is pretty helpful um, that we have a landmark like that to, to line up with. The rest of it is not so easy going because obviously here we have our bicep into our forearm and then we have the rest of our forearm and the beginning of our hand. So we don't have so many landmarks going on after that, but at least we have one guideline that we can kind of fall to um, and then we can kind of mess around and figure out the rest as we go. But, okay, jumping into this, let me, um, I don't want you to get too detailed with the body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this body back and then I'll draw it really quickly with you guys. Okay, so you guys can probably see that's very light. And I'll lower this down too, so I don't get too distracted by it. Um, but what we're essentially doing is I want you guys to just draw like a nice simplified body. It doesn't have to be, I put some detail on mine just so you guys can tell where the landmarks are that I'm trying to aim for, right? But like you don't have to go as detailed as I went. So it can be as simple as, all right, here's my head. All right, just throw an oval shape in there. It doesn't matter too much because if I want to go into detail this later, I can. So we're drawing light, right? And then we give ourselves that center line going down. You know, I know my neck starts up here, finishes somewhere down here. And then if we remember our torso, we have it coming down here. And then we have our shape of the rib cage that we're worrying about. Okay. And then we're also thinking about maybe the shape of the pelvis in there. Okay. And then you can just kind of draw on top of this. Even if you wanted to just draw like a very loose curvy shape. That's fine. It, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a curvy shape because it doesn't have to be a female. Um, I just noticed that when I give these lessons, I tend to start with um, a male figure for whatever reason because in most of my personal art, I actually draw more females than males, so I don't know why I would actually default to that. But um, so today, for this lesson, I push myself to just to start with a female form. Because I know you guys are always curious too about um, what's the difference between male and female, which we'll discuss as well. But, okay, so it can just be something simple like that, maybe just a blank body form um, that we don't need too much into, right? Just something that you have the basic shapes of the body. So that way we can kind of line things up where we can kind of see like where the body curves right here at the bottom of the rib cage pretty much lines up with the elbow, right? So these are little things that we can start looking at too. Um, you know, on some points, it would say that the elbow should be just a little bit higher than the, the belly button. So like knowing where the belly button is, which is what this the line, the, our guidelines is, is what will help us. So, um, and then for right now we're drawing the torso without the arms on there, right? And we'll get into the arms in a second. Okay, so as you guys are kind of drawing this in, 
Um, and once you get that body shape in, so let's start start gridding it out like I did, right? The reason I did this in advance is because if you guys watch any of my videos, you know that the ruler tool is not my friend on this program, so I wanted to do that in advance. But essentially all I'm doing is I'm taking this size and then I'm moving it down. And then it should be the same size here, same size here, same size here. And you're going to grid and grid. Okay. So go ahead and add your figure on your page. Male or female, doesn't matter. We're going to cover both of those, but to be honest with you guys, just straight up from the, the start, the anatomy of the arm is not going to change drastically from male to female, unless we're just talking about like straight on, like, are we drawing someone who's super bulked up or someone who's super lean? Um, for the most part, though, you don't see too much differences in the anatomy and the appearance of the arm. Uh, okay, so let me get rid of that. So you guys can start, you guys fill that in, get your grid going, get your person. If you want to add detail, you can get the detail in there. Um, but again, we're trying to focus on the arm today, so don't overdo it on the detail to the point that you can't get the rest of this lesson in. So um, over here in the corner, I'm going to add in um, our arms from the beginning, if you guys remember. And right now we're looking at the front arm, which is this one. Whoops. It's this one. Okay. When we do a back view, um, we'll be looking at the other one. But for now, we're looking at the front view. Okay, so what are some things that we need to notice when we're looking at the front view? Um, we need to remember that the bicep is right here, front and center. Okay. The, um, the bicep and the shoulder are interacting in a way that you don't see any like skin overlap in there, so we don't want to do anything like this. Again, unless we, unless we start going into like, you know, really lean body fat percentage kind of things or um, just overall just crazy muscle definition. Okay. Um, otherwise, we don't see too much at the elbow, but we do need to know the placement. Sometimes you get a little dip in the arm here where the bicep connects to the forearm. Right. And then otherwise, we just have a bump on this side, and then this side is pretty much a straight. Okay which that's going to be a constant in art. Um, we have definitely talked about that before, where you're always going to have like a curved side and then a straight side, and then a curve and a straight, or whatever it is. It could be, it could be opposites too. Curved side, straight, and then this side is straight now, and this side's curved, right? They can play against each other. Definitely, like, if you ever look at cartoonists like Bruce Timm's work, um, if you guys remember the Justice League show back in the day, or Batman Beyond, um, he, like, just looking at the way that he simplifies the arm anatomy is, like, a really cool way to kind of actually learn your anatomy and how the arm actually works with those straights and curves. Um, but anyways, let's get to this. Let's go ahead and draw in our arm. So I'm going to go and draw my arm over here, okay? So we have that one on, on the left side to look at and reference. <clears throat> And I know certain things. So I already know that my shoulder has to stop on this line. So that's pretty simple. So the shoulder really just comes out and over and then down. And then it tucks back in. Okay, It's because the, mu the muscle of the shoulder is literally tucking and holding in the bicep. And then realistically, the bicep's coming all the way up here and connecting to that the humerus, the top of the humerus bone. But the, the shoulder is actually covering a good portion of it. Right? which is another reason why it creates that nice round fan shape. So, you know, we have our um, our traps here and our neck coming down, and I have a blank spot here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in a light circle shape or an oval here just to kind of feel out the shape, see how wide I want it to go. And then I'm going to come in now and then define that shape. And you can come in and look at it. Um, 
for male versus female, you're definitely going to have more of a slope. What I mean by that is it's going to go down on a female, whereas males tend to have broader shoulders, so you might want to keep that shoulder going up or straight out. Okay. Because um, that's something that's usually played up on male anatomy would be like shoulder width. And then if it confuses you, you can get rid of some of those lines in there. I'm going to just keep it like that. Now I know next I have my the curve right here of the waist. I know that's going to give me about where my elbow is going to be, right? So I can bring down two lines. And I'm just going to keep them curved. I know this is going to generally be showing the bicep. This one's going to be coming out from the side. And you're going to see a little bit of the tricep there, but not much. And it's coming down. And then I know this is about as long as I can make that upper part of the arm be before having to acknowledge the elbow, right? So this is this should be the thinnest point of the arm, too. And then you can imagine if the arm was coming behind here, this would be the widest point. Okay. Um, but again, it's not going to be crazy exaggeration um, wider at the top and too much narrower at the upper arm. We see more of that exaggeration as we get to the, the forearm. Okay, so let's take a line over and look. And it looks like the bump of the arm is going to start. So we have here our right side. I'm on the right side right now. And I'm going to just come in and start the bump of the arm right up here. And then remember it's going off into off onto the side a little bit. So maybe I'll give myself a little guideline there just so I remember. So I don't accidentally draw the arm going down here into the, the body. Because the arm is right now, it's, it's turned over, it's supinated. We're seeing the palm of the hand. So when that happens, our wrist actually naturally is um, now going over to the side. It's away from our hips, right? So I create that bump. And it's just going to come down. I know it's going to come down to a taper. But I'm going to just draw that in nice and light and rough because I don't really know what the other side's going to look like just yet. And then I know right here, if you guys can see the elbow and the start of the forearm on the other side, they're on a bit of a diagonal. So it looks like I have a decent diagonal there. So I'm going to create my little elbow bump. We don't go too crazy with it because we're not seeing so much of the elbow. If anything, I exaggerated that a little too much. And then from here, it's just going to be like a straight, like maybe like a little bit of a curve to it, just to show that more organic kind of shape. And then I know right about here, right above the bottom part of the pelvic floor, is where my wrist is about, right? So I can always, that's why I drew my body, right? So I can take from the landmarks on my body and bring it over. So I know here and here is going to give me that form. And then you can come in and erase your little guidelines if you need to and kind of assess if you like it or not, right? Because uh, things can always change. For me, I like to show a little more of that internal detail. So like maybe just kind of showing the bicep tucking into the arm there. If you don't want the bicep to be too prominent, you can always just do this with like a little bit of a line. Um, it can come from either way, wherever you think the bicep would be more prominent. Um, but because we all have that little tuck in point of our elbow, right? It's where our elbow um, bends. It would be like right there. So we don't see it so prominently. Okay, but this looks pretty good to me. You know, the elbow, I mean, you have the forearm nice and thick up here. It's coming in and tapered down below. And then we followed our proportions, right? We're hitting the shoulder mark there on the second headline and in between the second to third headline we got our elbow right about in the middle there and then we're hitting our wrist section and then again for, for the hand I'm just going to kind of draw like a box shape however you guys want to draw it if you guys want to go into it later and draw it feel free um, but for me I just want to keep keep up with the hand I mean, sorry, with the, with the hand. Now I'm getting stuck on the hand. With the arm is what I want to keep up with. Cool? So this is going to be the arm from our front view. Okay? So now we're going to go to the back view. 
and I do have a pre-drawn back view, but I'll draw it out with you guys too, like I did for the front one. And let me just, oops, turn this off, and then here's the back view. <clears throat> okay, so again, we're focusing on, for the back view, before I draw with you guys, we're focusing on this arm now, okay? So, erase, whoop, now erase this arrow. I don't get too confused, and I'll keep that arrow there. All right, how do we draw the back view again? Really quick recap. So if you guys remember the back view, you're not seeing you're not seeing to the chin, okay? Because the chin is only something that we see from the front. So we're actually getting mostly just the back of the skull here. And of course, this isn't something you probably naturally see unless someone's um, bald that you're drawing. But most people would have like hair or something back here, so you don't generally see this area too much. <clears throat> this is where the neck or where the spine comes into the skull, and then you have your neck coming down with the muscles coming down here and here. Um, I especially important on the back side to draw your center line going down, because like your spine is your center line, right? Um, from here, remember, we're just going to draw in our rib cage. Now the ribs are a little thicker at the top and a little narrower at the bottom, okay? Doesn't need to be too perfect, but we just have to get that basic shape in. And of course, we have the box of our pelvic floor, our pelvis down here. And then if you are drawing um, female like me, then you can just kind of go ahead and give it that loose curve shape if you want. I went in and again, I drew um, glutes which float just underneath this headline, or sometimes you can have them on that headline. And then right here on the chest line, I, go ahead, I went and put in the shoulder blades here. Um, what I'm trying to find when I do stuff like this is I'm trying to find my landmark, so that way I can keep comparing it to the other things I'm drawing, you know? So like, um, if one day I'm just trying to draw something really quick and I don't have all these guidelines, but I've already drawn in some of these proportions and stuff like the hips and the glutes and the, sho the shoulder blades and stuff like that, I can remember like, oh yeah, at the bottom of the shoulder blade, or maybe even a little higher than the shoulder blade would be where the shoulder muscle tucks in, right? Um, these these are always the things that I'm trying to I'm trying to keep these little cheats in my head so that I can always remember. Cool. So once you have this this basic shape here, um, we're gonna go ahead and draw in our arm. Okay. So let me go back to my other one. Let's see. Let me just bring this back up. All right. And again, I have this one over here. Uh, right now, just just so you guys can reference it as I draw the other one. Um, if you guys want to come back and draw the other arm in there too, definitely recommend it. But like, you guys kind of should have your own idea of how to go about drawing that arm after we've drawn this side, right? So let's get to it. Um, okay, only thing to really notice here is now we're looking at the tricep, less of the bicep. We can't actually even see the bicep. The tricep um, goes a little bit higher and covers the, the shoulders um, more prominently shown in the front. It does wrap around to the back, so we do see it, but there's a little more tricep poking out here. So we do kind of see a little bit of that skin overlap, if you guys can see my little line overlapping right there. Um, the back comes in front of the arm a lot because our lat muscles are so just huge. Um, it's one of the most, it's bigger muscle groups of your body. So like they do overlap and come in front of the arm a little bit. Um, right, we're seeing different shapes here. We're seeing more of our elbow. And then we're seeing a little less dramatic of the curves going on down there, but we still, 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 still get that taper, okay? Always gonna look for that taper. That's what, even if you get the anatomy of the arm wrong, if you get that forearm taper, it's going to still look pretty decent. Um, and that's kind of cool. So, okay. Let's go ahead in. 
So remember, it's going to come out and down, and then nice and curved, okay? So, I don't need to come out too far from mine. I'm trying to keep these about the same size, right? So out and down, and then nice and curved. Okay. So there we have that. Now I'm going to start my line up here, and I'm going to bring it down. Again, our arm is sticking a little bit out on a diagonal here. So if that helps you to draw that line, draw that line so that way we don't accidentally draw the arm going into the body. Okay. I'm just going to bring my line down here. Might have to erase some of that. And then let's say the tricep comes out from a little lower. And it kind of just curves in right before it immediately turns into that elbow. So where do we find our elbow, right? It's always right here where the body tucks in, where the hips start, right? So bring that line over, say OK. Right, it's about the same spot over there, too. So I know my elbow is going to start somewhere around here. Maybe I can make this top part of the arm a little longer. All about feeling it out. And then I know that there's a diagonal here, right? So then I can kind of just give myself that diagonal and say, okay, I made this upper part of the arm a little too long. So now I can just kind of come and have it come out from here. And I know I want my arm to come out this way. So you can just follow that line. So I'm going to create a bump and taper. And then this is just going to kind of come in almost more of a straight than you saw on the front side and taper. But remember, if the wrist does not come down to this line, um, it's going to come down maybe about halfway, a little more like three quarters of the way down from that headline, right? So looking at somewhere about right here. So I don't want to get too long with it. Okay, always check, always double check with your proportions to make sure everything's right. Especially if you have an arm on one side already and you're drawing the other arm, it's so easy to just like, I mean, you can just draw your best line over there and kind of like gauge it. You can come up with your ruler, right? And just like check, like, okay, like even look, I can see that one side of my forearm starts a little higher than the other one. My elbows look pretty good though. My wrist about on the same mark. Shoulders about the same mark. Okay, you know, if I was going to be like a real stickler, now I could come in and just kind of erase into this, and like I just saw, maybe make this a little longer, the upper arm a little longer, and make my forearm a little bit shorter, and then it should be more similar to my other drawing. And all I had to do was go in there and check. Um, you can draw in a little more of the elbow if you want. Sometimes I like to show these guys as a connecting shape in like this like fitting together like that it just kind of helps me piece it together because I know the elbow is going to pop up and then there's a long head of the tricep that does stick down here so <clears throat> it, you will see that um, but that's not necessary but this also just kind of helps me find where my elbow might be a little better too and then of course we have our hand in here which I'm just going to draw in as a simple shape, like so. Cool. All right, I think that's pretty good without overcomplicating it. Yes, yeah, so we can start looking at things another time of like, what does our arm look like from the side view, right? Like if it's coming down maybe this way um, and all those things, what happens when my arm flexes up and now my arm is going like this way? These are all different things that we can cover and talk about. But just as basic um, length and proportions, I just kind of want to give you guys this something to go off of because you can always look at pictures now and remember that even in a position like this, this still needs to be shorter than this, okay? And now you guys have an idea of the anatomy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, as always, let me know in the comments if there is something specific about the arms that you want to learn. If you had any questions or concerns about drawing this, and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, we'll see you guys soon.